Greetings YouTube! I'm getting a little bit annoyed. My camera is still broken, yes I know. I promised I would stop talking about it. It's still irritating me. It's one of the reasons I haven't done a video in two and a half weeks. The It will record video, but it won't record audio properly anymore, which is why I'm crouched in front of me snowball microphone instead. And why I can't do any green screen at the moment, which is another bloody irritation. I like doing green screen. Anyway, this is Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep One-Shot Wonderland's Adventure. Jesus Christ, and I thought Birds of Prey had a long-winded title. It even has the graffiti coloured in around it, you know, all the little things. Basically, it's an advert for Tiny Tina's Wonderland's. I mean, for crying out loud, even before the game starts, it's giving you access to the PlayStation Store. Here, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Pre-order this, pre-order that. And why are the two special editions apparently optimised for the PS5? Is, is the standard edition of the game, like, optimised for the PS5 as well? Because it doesn't say it is. It's kind of bothering me. You get the classic by now menu with the orbiting camera, of course, the intro by Marcus with stylized drawings. We've all had these in Borderlands games before. Welcome, fine ladies, to your first session of the most coolest game in the world, Bunkers and Badasses! As your Bunker Master, I will be spinning today's tale of fantasy and... Wait, why the hell are we playing this kid's game? Oh, you know, maybe because... Shut the hell up, Morty! Tina? She's right, though. Shut up. Yeah, this, in case you didn't know, is riffing on Dungeons & Dragons in a massive way. Character classes for the game are ripped directly from Borderlands 2. Initially, I thought to myself, hang on a minute, haven't I seen all these things before? Yeah, that's why I thought they looked familiar. They're from Borderlands 2. First thing the game does is it turns your expectations on its head. A lovely day in Flame Rock Refuge, a far cry from- Wait, didn't you just say the sorcerer messed up the town? Why would things be lovely? Uh, whoops. Uh, what I meant to say is, it's eternal night, and you hear spooky music, and the whole area kind of smells like butts and dead people. Hey, this area smells vaguely of butts and death. An unpleasant stench. Now, that's probably a really simple trick. But it's really fucking impressive, and it does it right at the beginning. And the voice cast and the script really help sell every weird ass thing like this that happens. And there's a fair few weird ass things like this. I immediately became irritated by the skeleton archers. These are the first enemy types you encounter, and they have like body armor, but we're not talking classic Borderlands body armor where you use corrosive weapons to inflict more damage and burn them down over time. No, we're actually talking actual armor which actually deflects your actual bullets and stops you landing actual damage. It's really annoying to let off a 40 times 12 shotgun into a skeleton's midriff and to inflict no fucking damage at all. It happened quite frequently to me, and yeah, it got bloody annoying by the end. They've also got a helmet that can deflect a single shot. Good news is the helmet comes off once that happens, and I do like this bit though, because this was a nice touch. If you shoot the helmet off a skeleton, and then shoot them in the head again, their skull comes off, their head comes off. And they don't just charge at you, they charge in random directions. <laughs> because they can't see where you are anymore. It was pretty funny. Their, the skeleton archers, their arrows slow you down. Or should I say bring you to a complete stop for a split second. That was another annoying thing. And again, these guys are right at the beginning, like level one enemies. Another thing that you will notice very early on with this is that every time you go up one level, you get two skill points. Now that's probably in deference to the fact that this game is way shorter 
than your average Borderland game. So it's leveling you up quicker. It's like, come on, we've got to get up. We've got to get to the end of the skill tree before the, before the game ends, you know? And then you get attacked by a dragon. You get close to the entrance to Flame Rock Refuge, but suddenly... The handsome sorcerer's pet dragon appears! Surprise attack! Oh, oh, I want to smack you. You try to attack the dragon, but your attacks do nothing! The dragon attacks and... <sighs> Critical hit! Great. Are we done now? Tina, uh, you can't start your campaign with a boss fight. Players can't win. Mmm, touche. Okay, everybody back up. Yes. I wanted to kill something. Okay, how about a new boss? He's a skeleton. And his name is... Mr. Bony Pants Guy? Mr. Bony Pants Guy! Does that work? This pleases me. Yeah, you should probably get used to this kind of thing. It, Tina's in control of the game and her whims, however scripted they actually are, and it's clear that they are scripted, they can change the nature of the game in a heartbeat. Enemies just vanish and are replaced by other ones. Funny location names pop up on screen. You enter the Forest of Tranquility! Tranquility? Boring! Hmm. Okay, good point. Dang, now I gotta come up with a better name for the forest. I've got it! And ah, oh, spiders. Why did it have to be spiders? Actually, in all fairness, these spiders look kind of tacky. They're nothing like, for example, the spiders in Conan Exiles, which I'm not so much bothered about the large spy, but the boss level spiders in Conan Exiles, I, I won't even look at them. They are, these ones are nice and Halloween decorative. They're like Halloween decorations. Also, if you look very closely, they're not spiders. I'm pretty sure these things have six legs. Look closely. One, two, three, four, five, six. At this point, uh, I can't see anymore. Not spiders. Now, I think it's fair to say that Borderlands has a rule book. It's a twisted rule book, but it has one nevertheless. There are certain things, you know, you shoot bad guys, etc, etc, etc. Dragon Keep doesn't have a rule book. I mean, besides Tina randomly changing things out from under you every so now and again. For example, there's this one section here. This is a jumping puzzle. Literally, the game calls it a jumping puzzle. Oh, what's that over there? It's a rune at the end of a bunch of super safe jumps and stuff. A jumping puzzle? And I couldn't fucking work it out. I spent 20 minutes wandering around trying to find the secret trigger to alter the platform movement because I kept on trying to use the platforms rising to give myself a boost to my jump. Trying to make the distance and you, I, it's, just, it's clear that you can't do it. Eventually, I just got pissed off and decided to jump. And it's at that point that I discovered that the puzzle is actually rigged to be impossible. You know, I'm pretty sure this jump is impossible. Fine. My bad. I'll make it doable. It's something that I wasn't expecting the game to do. To put something in your way that you literally couldn't get past and expecting you to jump into the bottomless void underneath in order to get past. Yeah, 
the, this this game doesn't follow any kind of rules, and it takes a bit of getting used to. There are various over-the-top characters from Borderlands. They're still here, like Mr. Torg, for example. Yes, the Queen went into the forest. It's too dangerous to go alone. I shall accompany you. Just one second, then. Whoop, time out. I gotta take this. This Tina. It's Mr. Torg! Tina! Put me in the game! Okay! The gatekeeper is now Mr. Torg! Woo! I had to say you are. So I'm a gatekeeper, huh? In that case, you gotta prove your bad attitude to get past me. First task, blow up the village's scouting blimps with the fire weapon. Because reasons! Rules? What rules? Fuck the rules! Shit. Was the thought that went through my mind when that happened. You bastard. I seriously jumped out of my seat. Here be dragons. Literally. Good luck hitting them in the air. It's like trying to fend off supersized rack. Except they're not as easy to kill. But this being Borderlands, it's not satisfied with lampooning Dungeons and Dragons only. It lampoons things like Game of Thrones as well. Also Dark Souls, with its lighting of the bonfires. Video gamers in general and the kind of things that they do with each other in game. And I'm pretty sure these floating skulls are something to do with Doom. Everybody roll your insight stat to see if you can solve that riddle. I shall repeat the riddle. I am everyone and no one. Everywhere. Rick, don't slam your dice onto the board. You broke Tina's figurine. Whoops. Uh, you won. Yay. Alright, hang on, I just wait a... Hang on, wait up, I'm gonna release, uh... <laughs> uh yes. I just gotta get my camcorder ready. There we go. Gonna <laughs> put dubstep behind footage of you guys dying at tons of hits on the Gecko Net. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Okay, action! The dragon from the beginning of the campaign approaches! Roll! Fire! Initiative! <laughs> Oh, now this fight was annoying. A big red dragon fight on a bridge. There's no cover and the target's hard to hit because it's a dragon and it flies all over the shop. And I'm using an elemental explosive rifle. Which means you've got to lead the target and the bastard keeps changing direction. It's really hard. Also, this. Now to be clear, I didn't step off the edge. I was knocked off. Look, I took a hit. If you watch the radar, the shit of a little dragon flew over to me and knocked me off the edge. And look at the boss's health gauge. I was so close. All I know is I had to start the fight from the very beginning, fuck. So after a couple of unsuccessful attempts at this boss, at this point I decided to go away and look up the game on the interweb, because I don't like to do that before I've played the game, or at least a, a fair bit of it, because I, I don't want my opinion to be altered by something I read or see or whatever. And yeah, I discovered at this point that it isn't a standalone game made specially to promote Tiny Tina's Wonderlands at all. It turns out that this is actually DLC number 4 for Borderlands 2 that they simply re-released as a standalone game. Now, when I thought that this was a 
specially created game, I was pretty fucking impressed, because let's be honest, most adverts are in the form of videos and articles. This was a full-blown game, even though it was a short one. Yeah, a little bit less impressed once I realised that it was uh, a DLC from 2013, nine years ago. But... I'm still pretty fucking impressed with the game itself, even though it is technically a, a DLC. I can see why everyone liked it back in the day, which they did. It also explains why the skeletons are so fucking tough at the beginning of it. Oh, and by the way, I did some side missions and got some different weapons, non-explody ones, and came back and kicked the dragon's ass pretty easily. It turns out that I was a bit under-leveled for the fight as well, that didn't help. I did have some issues with this, and in the way of issues I mean actual issues, I don't mean Tiny Tina fucking things up on a whim, I mean actual problems. It's nothing unexpected, it's typical Borderlands stuff. Fights, for example, go on for way too long. Enemies just seem to keep on spawning over and over and over and over again. Sorry for crying out loud, I've killed 30 of you, please stop. It's more obvious in uh, in a particular place. It's the fight versus the four ghost kings. Where you, you just basically fight the same mini-boss four times in a row. They don't even do anything different each time, and there's tons of henchmen. Took me 10 minutes to chew through everything. The henchmen eventually stopped spawning which made the Ghost Kings easier to kill, but even so, you're like, for crying out loud, please stop. As always in Borderlands, you are super dependent on loot drops for getting good guns, and you can upgrade six, seven, eight levels without getting something better. And the only thing you can do, as always, is to pray to RN Jesus, because the game ain't giving you anything unless you unless you get randomly lucky. It's the only way to get anything decent. One of the missions almost completely broke for me though. Uh, I think the mission was called Tree Hugger or something. It wouldn't complete. I physically got stuck in the area the first time and the second time the tree got stuck. And it was particularly annoying because as far as I'm aware this is the only mission in the game which is failable. It's the only mission you can fail to complete. So because he wouldn't move, I went off, did some other stuff, came back, he's still not moving. You know what, I, I don't fucking care. I'm the, oh wait a minute, he's, he's smashed the huts anyway. I don't know what happened with this mission. Even in Tiny Tina's game, this didn't make any sense. Also, how can you fail to pick up a gun? I'm just asking. All right, I'm gonna just give this one to you. You see a powerful <laughs> gun on the ground. Rick, go to pick it up. I got a one. A one? That's a critical fail, otherwise known as a fumble. What? How can you fail to pick up a gun? Uh, it looks like the gun flies out of your hands into the distance. Crap. What? That's the rules, Morty. Calm down, baby. Just track the gun down and roll again. You find the gun again. Lilith, roll to pick it up. Um, what? Oh, uh, while picking up the gun, it accidentally slips from your hands again, but not before breaking all your fingers. Take, like, a lot of damage. I broke my finger. This makes no sense! Yeah, that was harsh. Okay, last chance, last roll. Mordecai, do it up! Are you freaking kidding me?! Ah, against all known laws of probability, the gun transforms into an enormous monster. The swords for hands. Ah, sorry. No. Sorry, 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 sorry. Don't stop! Ah, 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 the monster dies and drops uh, a gun. Will you pick it up? No. Ah, screw it. I'll just give it to you. Go ahead and take Don't it. No rollies. 
Does this actually happen in Dungeons and Dragons? I'm just curious. I officially hate dice. Thunder and shit balls! Was my approximate thoughts when the game did it to me again. The bastard. Side missions are few compared with your average Borderlands game, but it is a smaller experience, is this? They're interesting, comedic, and Borderlands bizarre. Plus a bit of Tiny Tina thrown in for good measure, of course. Tina, you're 13 years old. Maybe you should consider eating something other than crumpets. <laughs> I brought food for lunch. <gasps> oh god, what is that? It, it's a salad. Why is it green? It looks like a demo! Just calm down. It's staring at me. You do have to run all over the damn map for some of these missions. I mean, normally you can complete these kind of missions as you go through a main Borderlands game. This has you running to and fro all over the damn place, especially the Bane. I mean, it had me running all over the map. Over here, laddie. My boys are itching to fight by your side. I punch him! Rick, don't. If you just talk to him, we can... I punch him! Uh... Quit it! My bad. Let's you should have never come down here. He was gonna leave us alone. Oh, damn it, Brick! Now we gotta fight through him to get out of here! In the distance, you see a lonely wizard blocking your path. Maybe he can help us out of here. I say we talk to him. With words. I don't know why y'all looking at me. Off my trap guard. Your death approaches. Notice I'm backing away from these chests now. I mean, it wasn't a mimic on this occasion, but even so, you get a bit chest shy after a while. As adverts go, this is a damn good one. I mean, yes, it's not a it, it's not a completely created specifically as a Tiny Tina Wonderlands advert from the ground upwards. Yes, it's technically a re-release of a nine-year-old expansion. And obviously, it's a shameless marketing plug for an upcoming game. I actually weirdly don't care. I mean, I kind of do care because the industry is kind of shit like that, but I also don't care because it's a fucking good game. And it's a freebie on PlayStation Plus this month. They just, th they they made it a standalone and then threw it open knowing full well that we'd all snap it up. I mean, at this point, I think it's safe to say that we've all seen the land sharks, in particular the land sharks. If Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is anything like this, it's going to be fucking awesome. It's going to be pretty sweet because it's not your average Borderlands game. Borderlands doesn't really pay much attention to video game rules in general, but it does have a rule book in a sense. The universe works in a really bizarre way, but it works in a particular way. This game really doesn't. Anything can happen here. I think Wonderlands is going to be completely insane. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. I've played 
so many Borderlands games now. You know when you play the same thing over and over again, you start to get a little bit tired of it. I have a feeling that's not going to happen this time. It's just a feeling. <laughs> 